Dr. Ryan Gable is welcoming you again to conditional distribution and density functions. Uh, our topic is conditional distribution and density function, conditional PDF and CDF. However, we will start from the recalling the probability so that we can extend the ideas to uh, the random variables. Remember from probability that for two events A and B, I'm using the red and the green color to, to relate to the diagram. For two events A and B, the conditional probability of the event A given event B occurred has the following. So we look at the probability of the intersection divided by the probability of the condition. That's to say probability of A, but now given B, which means B occurred. We have changed the universe from being everything to just B. So it's this intersection, this region, which is the intersection divide by the region of B or the probability of having B we have covered this before and we will use this to extend the idea to extend the concept to random variables we had conditional probability which something that which is something that we know and now it's time to extend this to um, to random variables so let's see how this works uh, the conditional probability we can think of x as being a random variable and it's defined to be the probability of x is less than or equal to a given value the reason we are writing event a in this format because this is very much related to the cdf to the conditional distribution so we can think of the capital f of x the cdf which is conditioned on b it's just like the probability of x less than or equal to a given x so now we have changed a to the following interval we now can use the conditional formula and we can write the CDF as probability and probability can be written extended as the probability of the intersection divide the probability of the condition so this is how we define conditional distribution because con distribution or CDF is directly related to uh, the probability Let's recall the properties of conditional distribution. We before had the properties of distribution, and now we have added the conditional. In fact, the conditional distribution is a valid distribution, which means all the six properties we had before are valid and they apply. So there is nothing new here, just recalling what we had before. So uh, this is probability of f of x minus infinity is equal to uh, or the CDF at minus infinity equal to 0, CDF at plus infinity equal to 1, and CDF is always between 0 and 1. The only thing that we have added is that we had the condition. I am using the blue color to distinguish um, the new added uh, expression. Notice it's non-decreasing, right continuous, nothing is new here. If you go to the lecture about the properties of distribution, you'll find all these things. I'm just trying to say that a conditional distribution is a valid distribution, so everything applies. If you are if you are willing to uh, to prove this, I'll just I just pick the first two. So the CDF at minus infinity, you can go from CDF to probability. It means that x is less than minus infinity. Of course, if you look at the intersection between these in intervals, uh, you get phi. There is no intersection because x has to be less than minus infinity, and then its probability is going to, is going to be zero, and you can uh, conclude that the final answer is zero. Similarly, we can do number two the CDF at infinity equal to 1. We can prove this in the same way we go from CDF to probability. Now the intersection between B and being less than infinity, of course, is going to be B because all numbers are less than infinity. So again, you get probability of B over B and this is equal to 1. In the same way, we can prove everything else by converting from CDF to probabilities. So this, is, this slide is just meant for completion to show you that conditional distribution has all probabilities or ha, ha, sorry has all the valid properties we can get the conditional density function in the same way the relation between the pdf the density function and the distribution if you like it's taken by taking the derivative conditional density function of the random variable x is the derivative of the distribution function. This is again just to verify the relation 
we had for non-conditional now when you take the derivative of course if your um, function the distribution has tip discontinuities there is discontinuity then of course you expect that when you differentiate you get impulses and this usually occurs in discrete random variables or mixed random variables so we have two cases where this could happen if we have discrete or mixed random variables you expect your conditional density function to have spikes or impulses we can also have the properties of the conditional density function again it's just a valid density function so you expect that all properties of density function being conditional or not is going to be the same being positive area equal to one and its relation to the cdf being the integral uh, of the the cdf is the integral of the pdf and also if you want to find the probability given the density you have to integrate over the given range so this condition is just added to all formulas maybe it's time now to see some examples now let's do an example for the conditional density and distribution this would be very much similar to the probability case but we'll do it for all scenarios and then we'll create a distribution the following table on the side shows you that we are going to draw a ball the ball could be red green or blue to make it a random variable we assign the number one to the red number two to the green and three to the blue now we have two different boxes small box and large box there are five red balls in the small box and then 80 ones 80 in the and 80 balls in the in the large box and so on and so forth for all the different uh, colors this shows you the sum of all balls in the small box and some of the balls in the large box and then this is the total across the rows and then across the columns we're calling the event of getting a small box b1 and then the event of uh, having a large box b2 a typical example for conditional probability but what we'll see how what we're going to do so we have two mutually exclusive events selecting small box or selecting the large box we're giving this is these are given that the probability of selecting the small box is 2 over 10 the remaining probability 8 over 10 will be for selecting the large box a random variable is defined as x and it's given the number here uh, as 1 2 or 3 based on the color of the ball so if somebody says for example find the probability of x equal to 1 which means it has it's a red ball I'm using colors here also to help out so the red goes with 1 and given that it's in the in b1 so if you know it's already in the box one so it's going to be five balls out of the hundred because we are conditioned again for x2 it's going to be 3, 35 over 100 and we have 60 over 100 we can also find the we can also go from these individual probabilities and write the pdf the pdf we're saying is made of three deltas three possibilities three impulses it could be x we have delta at x minus 1 this is the value of the random variable and this is the associated probability so for discrete random variable for the conditional example here whether it's being conditional or otherwise I can go from probabilities by writing the sum of deltas where the shift here represent the value of the random variable and the coefficient represent the probability and so we have a valid density a conditional density function you can go from density to distribution by integration constants remain the same and the delta become units for comparison we're doing the non-conditional case so for the non-conditional case the non-conditional probability we are trying to find what is the difference between conditional and non-conditional distribution so we repeated the problem for finding the probability of x1 so we use a total probability it could come from the first box or the second box so remember the total probability theorem and the conditional probability theorem so I'm just applying them here if you are not sure you can go back to our videos about probability uh, earlier so then we can get 0.437 probability of x2 in the same way it's going to be 3.39 you can practice this to prove you can pause the video and, and try to prove this and finally we can find the remaining 1 minus these two should give you 0.173 I'm writing the, the PDF it's good to practice here the coefficient the value times Delta X minus the shift is the value of the random variable 0.39 
times delta x minus 2 the random variable because this is where the the point 3 probability occurs and then we can go to the distribution on the side here I use MATLAB stem and stairs functions to plot the two cases so you can see that the blue curve shows the PDF which is non-conditional and the, the distribution or the values have been reassigned according to the conditional scenario which is shown here in brown or red all right so you can see that conditional is not equal to the unconditional but both of them are valid PDF with area uh, equal to one and then they are valid CDF starting from zero going to saturate at one 